Hey there YouTube, it's uh, Patrick, one half of Fuzzy Motion. I'm here to review Drive, a uh, new film starring Ryan Gosling as a driver. In fact, that's his character's name, Driver. He uh, basically has two jobs. He does stunt driving for movies during the day and at night uh, does like the Grand Theft Auto side missions where he, um, you know, has like scumbags employ him uh, and he gives him five minutes to go rob something or do whatever, uh, and then he basically drives them to safety. Um, the uh, first, I'm going to go through a little bit of the plot of the movie. No spoilers. Um, all right, basically there are two plots going on. One uh, involves the driver, who is employed by Brian Cranston's character. Um, I, his name like completely escapes me right now. Um, and Cranston's kind of like sees him as his protege and Cranston also sees him as a meal ticket and he brings him to the attention of a character played by Albert Brooks and Ron Perlman and he wants them to invest in a car and have the driver race and so they can make a ton of money the other plot is driver's relationship with his neighbor played by Carrie Mulligan who um, also has a son, and she has a husband that just gets out of prison as, as the movie goes on. Um, now, both of these plot threads, let's just say bloody wackiness ensues on both ends. Um, as, we far, as far as a review, uh, you know what? Yeah, let me start the review now. Okay, that's what happens a lot during the movie. He a lot of staring and not talking. Um, if you were at all annoyed by that little tiny short burst of me just looking into the camera and found it a little weird, you're probably not going to enjoy Drive. Um, I'll say that. Um, before I actually do get into the review, I want to do a little background. Um, I knew the director of this film from him directing... Well, not personally. Well, I knew him directing this film from directing uh, Bronson uh, from My Love, starring Tom Hardy. Um, so I was looking forward to it because of that. Plus, it won the Best Director Prize at the Cannes Film Festival. Um, you can't trust that film festival, just like you can't trust the Oscars, though. So I was still a little... I mean, it was nice to hear, but I was still a little whatever. Then all the, like, blogs and reviewers that I you know, trust and listen to online were, you know, really giving the film, like, you know, aces across the board, and, um, so then I was really starting to get excited about it, and then I listened to the soundtrack, which I expected to be good, because Bronson's soundtrack was so good, and I really, really got excited about it, and basically everyone kept saying how the movie's a masterpiece, you know, so on and so forth, so my expectations going into this movie were simply that it was going to completely blow me away and I was going to absolutely love it. That is probably the worst possible way to walk into any movie, thinking that way. Uh, it's not fair to the movie and it's not fair to you. So I would, in future, try to avoid doing that for no matter what movie it is. Um, because, truth was, I wasn't blown away. Um, and that's what was disappointing. Um, I'm going to go a little more in-depth about it, but that, that was my knee-jerk reaction to it. Uh, also, another factor in, in everything was the audience I saw it with last night. Uh, not last night, Sunday night. Uh, New York audiences are pretty amazing, where they will be you know, cheering and clapping. It can actually enhance a borderline mediocre movie into a really fun film-going experience. The audience I saw Drive with, I mean, they from like minute one you could just like feel that it was basically like what the fuck are we watching that's what this audience was I mean they had no idea what they gotten themselves into absolutely none and it felt like they were like creeping closer to the screen with like their searing hatred of the movie so uh yeah that didn't help things at all at all um but uh yeah, you know, so with those two factors, you know, really overhyping the movie and the audience, I'm going to, you know, take this review with the idea that that's how this film experience was for me. Um, right from the opening, 
um, is a good example of being underwhelm underwhelmed. Everyone talked about how brilliant the opening is where the driver basically... It's kind of a mini action sequence where the driver uh, uses his skills to, uh, you know, take some, like, criminals from one place to another. And it's not like a regular Fast and Furious action scene. You know, he's smart, he parks the car and waits and then goes and then, you know... Um, and it was good. It introduces his calm and everything like that, but uh, and how smart he is and how good of a driver he is and everything like that, but uh, it wasn't, you know the most, like, amazing thing, like, a lot of these reviews were, like, talking about it. I mean, it was good, but it wasn't, you know, crazy amazing or anything like that. Um, let's see, what else? Yeah. The staring. Now, I had heard in this movie that Ryan Gosling's character doesn't say more than a hundred words, which is probably true. Um, and I heard there's a lot of scenes of between him and other characters just kind of not saying anything and just, like, staring at each other. Uh, not staring. I mean, you know, the, it's supposed to be like uh, you're supposed to be able to read both characters, and you know, you really like watch, and that's um, you can applaud the movie for taking like a chance on that. And I, well, you know, I knew that was going to be happening going in, but what I didn't expect was it was going to be happening that many times, and each time it was going to happen for that long. It just went, uh, yeah, by you know. The third time Gosling and Carrie Mulligan got into the car and basically said, you know, two words to each other, I was kind of getting impatient. And I felt bad that I was getting impatient. I thought, what's wrong with me? Why am I getting impatient here? Um, but, yeah. Uh, I mean, sometimes it worked because sometimes, you know, it was funny. It was supposed to be funny. Like him staring with the, uh, the kid, uh, Carrie Mulligan's kid, and having a staring contest saying, like, oh, you blinked. That's funny. Uh, and even sometimes when he was supposed to be a little more menacing, it definitely works as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, it just, it got to be too much after a while for me. Just personally, it just really did. Um, the actors, though, I gotta say, I gotta give Gosling credit on really creating a hell of a performance without saying much. Um, all the credit in the world. I'm, I'm a fan of his. Yes, I enjoyed The Notebook. I'm a fan of his. Um, you know, he makes interesting choices, um, and Carrie Mulligan, uh, yeah, actually, wait, before, let me get the Carrie, uh, Gosling, let me just say he's completely believable as this really sweet, you know, kind guy of few words, uh, kind of like a Clint Eastwood man with no name, I've heard it compared to that, and then there are times where he can just be as brutal as possible, and, uh, I'll give him credit for doing that, it really is a hell of a, hell of a uh, performance, uh, Carrie Mulligan, is great. She basically plays the personification of innocence in this movie, uh, and she does it really well. Brian Cranston from uh, Breaking Bad, which I have to get on because uh, I haven't watched it yet. Uh, he was, you know, he was really good, uh, which is expected. You know, it was funny. Um, the two villains in the movie, Ron Perlman, uh, played Ron Perlman, and uh, Albert Brooks, who's more usually a comedian. Um, you know, he played against type, and I keep on I kept on hearing, like, praise about his performance, how amazing he was, and everything like that. You know, he was good, you know, just like the opening sequence was good, but it wasn't like, oh my god, uh, that I think people were talking about. I really didn't feel that. Um, the movie has interest inter <laughs> has moments of violence that I enjoyed all of the moments of violence, as my computer shuts off on me. I enjoyed all the moments of violence, and um, that sounds kind of weird, uh, but they were really well done. Uh, there's even a really crazy, funny kind of moment for me where there's violence taking place in a strip club, and all the like strippers are kind of just watching it, really indifferent to the whole thing that I thought was pretty hilarious. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the violence was good. Well done. Really, 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 really bloody. So if you don't like blood, don't go see it. Um, the soundtrack was great. In fact, there's a song on the soundtrack called um, Under Your Spell, and there's a scene in the movie where it's Carrie Mulligan and Ryan Gosling's character clearly thinking about one another, and the song plays over. For me, it was the best moment in the movie. It was like watching... It was almost like watching like visual like poetry, and I think, I think if the rest of the movie had been like that, 
I would have been calling it a masterpiece like everyone else was. In fact, probably the people that called the movie a masterpiece felt the movie um, felt the movie was like probably watching like visual poetry where it was like half haunting and like half beautiful. There were a couple of really, really good moments like that that really have stuck with me. Um, but it wasn't the whole movie. It was not the whole movie. It could not keep all that up for me. Um, uh, and I'm not going to go into spoilers, but there's two, like, fights by the end of the movie. Uh, one of them takes place on a beach, um, and there's, like, a random, like, lighthouse effect going on, where the light keeps, like, shining on everybody, and then she goes away, shines on, goes away. And there's another fight where we, instead of seeing the two characters fight, we see their shadows on the ground fighting, and both fights... Both like moments completely took me out of the movie because I was thinking like, oh, he's making, he's doing this like art, artsy kind of uh, thing. Uh, like they just took me out of the movie, and I, I, you know, that's that's not what you're supposed to you're supposed to do. Um, you know, I get the whole shadow thing it was supposed to, I guess, it was supposed to be like two dark characters fighting. I mean, I guess if it was if somebody else got something else from it, you know, let me know. Um, yeah, that's really all, really all I got. Um, I'm, I'm really disappointed that I didn't, you know, love this movie. As of right now, I'm going to give it a 7 with, like, an asterisk, because I'm going to watch it again when it comes out on the, um, PlayStation Network. I'll rent it before I even think about buying it. Uh, I'll just say to anyone that is thinking about going to see this movie, if you've watched this review, I'm just letting you know right now, you got to be ready for, for it. you got to be ready for it. This is like watching, think is, Think of if you're going to watch an artsy French film from the 70s. It's like, think, like, that's the mindset you might actually need or something like that going into it. Because um, I thought I knew what I was getting into. I, you know, I knew the director, I knew, you know, how the movie was going to be a bit slower, it wasn't an action movie, it wasn't, you know, and I was still unprepared for it. Plus, like I said, the audience, you know, absolutely, like, loathed it, which really didn't help. Um, so, you know, I was really hoping for the movie to be, uh, better than Warrior, which I saw last week, but it's not. Warrior still remains my number one movie. And, uh, yeah. That's pretty much all I got. So, I hope you guys, um, you know, rate, comment, tell me I have, you know, no integrity because I couldn't enjoy the movie like you could because you're so much smarter. Or tell me you thought the same thing. Either way, uh, I think Rob's going to do a review too because he watched it and uh, his reaction was, eh. So, um, yeah. That's it. I'll see you guys next week. I'm probably going to start doing some like Blu-ray reviews and stuff like that uh, before I get into Dexter. Uh, Alright. Later.